Okay, so welcome back. Now today we're going to show you how to get started from scratch to write your own software application. Now I'm going to assume you haven't written software before, maybe you've thought about it, and but you haven't taken the, the leap into writing your own software. Um, this will be for you to show you how to get started from the very beginnings. So the question may be, why do I need to write software? Can I just, you know, download free software? There's a ton of it around. Just download and run free software or, you know, go to GitHub and copy and paste and run it. Isn't that better? Well, no. In my view, it's a big mistake to do that for a bunch of reasons. Now, first of all, if you're like me, um, I've been an electrical engineer for about 45 years. I enjoy learning about stuff, figuring out how stuff works, simulating stuff, doing data acquisition, and trying to understand the world. Um, if you rely on other people's software, you lose that opportunity. So I really encourage you to think about writing your own software. And there's other reasons why you don't want to just copy and paste software. Of course, there are reasons why you need to in some cases, but where you can get around it I think just copying and pasting software is a big mistake. For example, we've talked about before, if you just download somebody's code, it can often be code that is, is either not what you need, poorly written, uh, impossible to debug, and you know, if something goes wrong, you'll never figure out what went wrong. It could include far more stuff than you need, and you're kind of wasting your resources by downloading the software. I think there's a lot of negatives to just downloading and copying and pasting software. One of the big things, from my perspective, uh, you lose an opportunity to learn. Um, I like to learn how things work, and by writing your own software, you learn from scratch how things work behind the scenes. For example, if we wrote, uh, long ago, we wrote a C-sharp application that simulates the electrical generators, the big electrical generators on your power system that your power company has, how that responds to a disturbance. It's kind of a physical and electrical simulation to show a transient response to a disturbance. And it's fascinating if you can go through and understand what's going on and how to simulate that from scratch rather than just blindly copying and pasting and not really learning. The other thing is it's important to uh, write software because I know a lot of people in the tech community love hardware. Hardware is fun, it's exciting, uh, flashing lights, powerful. Uh, people want to see hardware reviews, they want to see the latest hardware, the latest GPU so they can play their video games. Um, however, keep in mind that all of that hardware is dumb. Hardware does nothing on its own. Hardware needs software in order to tell it to what to do. For example, if you start up your computer at home with no operating system, it's just going to sit there and look dumb and do nothing. People like dancing robots and self-driving cars. They're just going to sit there without tons and tons of software written over many years that tell it how to dance and how to be a self-driving car. So it really is very important. If you're like me and you like to learn things and understand how things really work, you really need to get into the world of writing your own software and not relying on downloading free software and copying and pasting uh, to the extent possible. Here I've got some examples uh, in this channel. We've written many applications over the years to do just that, to um, do data acquisition, to do simulation, and to do a lot of things that will help you to understand how the world works. So for example, here I've got, uh, recently we just did this logger application. And this is a wonderful way to take a, a $20 inexpensive device called an Arduino. And what it's doing is it's measuring the frequency of the wall outlet voltage provided to us by our power company. And we're looking at the last 30 minutes of the frequency measurement. And as we explained before, this is a very interesting aspect of the power company where it's got hundreds of generators feeding many millions of customers over many states here in the U.S. And this frequency is kind of a heartbeat to show the status of that power system. Is it, for example, are there too many customers and not enough generation? Kind of like your car going uphill and slowing down because it's overloaded. Uh, you can monitor that entire power system over many states to see how it's doing. Is it overloaded? Is it underloaded? 
Um, so you can do this with writing a free C Sharp application and using only a $20 Arduino and you can get this information if you're interested in, in learning stuff like this. We also did a similar application where we turned that Arduino into an oscilloscope and it's free. All you have to do is write the application and it actually operates as an oscilloscope. Uh, we've got other applications here. Up here, I've got a, um, uh, a simple application that gives you the time of day, and it also gathers from the internet the outside temperature, and also from an internal sensor, uh, what's the inside temperature. This will save this data, and you can measure as a result of that. We've got here uh, a 30-day graph of both internal and outside temperature, and you can see in the orange, I've got the outside temperature over a 30 day period between August and September, and then the indoor temperature over the same period. And you can get a very good indication of how the temperatures and the climate is actually responding rather than just rely on other people to tell you what the answer is. We've also got here an application that we'll be talking about in the future, which is kind of a calculator application. And it's really nice. It's got little tabs where you can do different calculations. Uh, here we've got a vector addition uh, or subtraction calculation where I've got two R plus JX vectors and I hit add and it gives me a graph of the two vectors and the sum, the resulting sum. Very nice. Um, I've got another three phase um, calculator for three, th three phase power systems that does some calculations. And I've got here a real time graph where what I'm doing is I am taking a sine wave and in real time I am adding a harmonic to it and you can see how the sine wave changes. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to develop this very simple application as our first application in this video. Very easy to do, very little, very few lines of code and you can do some cool stuff like this. Now here's another application we're going to be talking about in the future. And if you have been involved in any mechanical or electrical engineering, you know that control systems are very important. And this application, you can simulate how different types of control systems will respond. And you can adjust the desired output. You can see the control system respond and the actual uh, machine output. So really wonderful way to learn how things work by um, simulating them. And in this case, we actually wrote the equations to understand how the machine and the controller systems work. So we now have a, a deep underlying understanding rather than just downloading somebody's application that does all this for us or looking at MATLAB or something and not really understanding what's going on under the hood. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to download what you need to be able to uh, very easily write stuff like this so it will help your learning experience. So now the first thing we need to do is download from Microsoft what's called an integrated development environment. What does that mean? Well, if you look at the name, it's an environment to al that allows you to easily develop software. It is absolutely wonderful. Say what you want about Microsoft. Uh, they make this Visual Studio integrated development environment and it's free for students, open source contributors and individuals. Okay. There's also paid versions for professional and enterprise, but if you're an individual, it is free and it is absolutely wonderful. It's called the community edition. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to download the community edition. Now you will scroll down here and see there's for, for Mac. If you have a Mac, you can use that. You will also hear about this, which is Visual Studio Code. A lot of people seem to like that. Uh, it's newer, which apparently implies that it's better. In my view, no, it's not. Uh, why don't I like Visual Studio Code? Well, Vi Visual Studio Code is not a complete integrated development environment like the community edition of Visual Studio. As it says, a standalone source code editor it is basically a text editor. So it's like having Notepad. It's basically just a fancy Notepad text editor. It doesn't give you a lot of what this um, Visual Studio IDE gives you. So I suggest you start out with this complete community edition of Visual Studio. All right. Now we're going to scroll down here and we can select what we want to download. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to choose C sharp and we're going to select desktop. Now, why do I choose C sharp? Most of the videos on this channel over the years have been writing things in C sharp and there's a, a bunch of reasons why I choose C sharp. Uh, it's a little bit older and of course people seem to think older is not as good as newer. I disagree completely. C sharp is absolutely wonderful especially if you're doing technical engineering type stuff. Uh, it makes it very easy to do user interface stuff. Um, there's a lot of very nice um, math libraries that can help you with matrices and things. Uh, absolutely wonderful C Sharp. Now people say, well, use Python because it's newer. I don't like Python. I think it, it encourages you to do some practices in coding that are very detrimental. For example, it, make, it, it tries to make things easier so you don't have to remember stuff, but in doing so, you write code that, you know, if you go back in six months and look at the code, you can't figure out what it's doing because they've made it too easy, but it makes it difficult to understand what's actually going on. So I dislike Python immensely. C Sharp encourages you to use some good programming practices, and to me, it's a whole lot easier. So I use C Sharp, and we're going to use a desktop application. Again, uh, you go online and people will say, oh, use the latest, the greatest, whatever. To me, that's utter nonsense. So what we're going to do is we're going to use C-sharp desktop application for Windows. So we're going to download the Community 2022. We're doing this early in 2022. We're going to download that. So I'm going to click on that and your download will start shortly. Click here to retry. You can see it's downloaded the Visual Studio setup.exe. And I'm going to click on it. And you want to allow this, of course. And it's going to go through the installation process and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so here we are about 15 minutes later and it downloaded about one gigabyte of data. So you're going to have to have that much, at least that much uh, spare on your hard drive. And uh, it doesn't run it automatically. We're going to have to go down here to the taskbar and search for Visual Studio. And here it is. We can click on it and we're going to start up Visual Studio. And it's going to give us a choice to either sign in or create an account or we can say not now, maybe later. I'm going to say not now, maybe later. And we can choose our theme. I'll set the blue theme and we're going to start Visual Studio. So here is the, um, the startup window you normally get when you start up Visual Studio. And you can see here you can clone a repository. We're not going to do that. We're going to open an existing project or solution. We're not going to do that. Open a local folder. We're not going to do that. We're going to go down here and create a new project and click that. And it's going to give you some templates. So here we've got class libraries, Windows Forms, app.net. And this is what we're going to use. Windows Forms app.net framework. And we can see it's C Sharp Windows Desktop. So we're going to select that. And we're going to hit next and we can give it a name, YouTube test. And we're going to put the solution and project in the same directory and hit create. And it's going to take a minute to start up. Now it's creating the project and here we go. We've got our basic Windows Forms application. And you can see it starts out with a form, a user interface. And it's really nice because um, because you can just kind of drag and drop controls on this. So for example, here's our toolbox here on the left and it gives you all these different controls. And we'll talk about those later, but you can have charts and you can have all kinds of controls. So the first thing we're going to do is click on this form and hit F7 and that will show us the code that we're going to start out with. And here is our basic code that we're going to start typing in. And I'm going to hit the control and scroll on my mouse to zoom it in. So this is basically we're all set to write our Windows Forms application. Now I can go up here to the start button with the arrow and, and see what it gives you as a basic um, application. And it's running. You can see here it is. It gives us a user form and we can do whatever we want with this. We can add a chart. We can add text boxes or whatever. Basically, we've got our first application. We can start adding to it and doing whatever we want. 
So now that you're up and running and uh, ready to write your first C Sharp application, uh, we're going to write this simple application with a chart. And what it's doing is it's charting a sine wave. And it's using what's called a track bar. And I can move the track bar. And as I increase the track bar, it adds more of a higher frequency component, sine wave, called a harmonic. And as I scroll the track bar up, it adds more and more of that second harmonic to the sine wave. And you can see it charting in real time, and it's scrolling. And um, we've talked in previous videos about some a different aspects of this. Um, but in the next video, we're going to put this from scratch. And in most of my other videos on C-sharp applications, I lead you line by line through the code you need to write. So I encourage you. Uh, instead of asking for uh, the entire application all done, uh, you'd be much better off by at least typing it in yourself based on what I show you, because that's how you learn stuff. Uh, if you just copy and paste again, you're not going to learn anything, and you know anybody can copy and paste. But if you want to really learn stuff and understand, uh, at least you need to type the code in yourself and then make your own modifications. So we're going to talk about that in the next video and help you to design this. So um, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some more viewers. Sure appreciate it. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.